My name is Hunter Lovins. I am president of Natural Capitalism Solutions. I'm also a professor of sustainable management at Presidio School of Management in San Francisco. And I travel the world working with companies, communities, countries on ways to use resources more productively and also more profitably. My field in working for a, a more sustainable way of living is how do you actually implement it? How do you put it into business? How do you build communities that are more sustainable and also more fun to live in? How do we create a, a vibrant, flourishing life for humans and for all other forms of life on the planet? One week a month, I travel to San Francisco and teach business students because this is the, the kind of information that the companies are now demanding. So one of my students last summer shadowed the chairman of Sam's Club, the uh, other half of Walmart, teaching him what sustainability means. Some of my students are helping companies like Red Bull implement a sustainability program. My students are now in some of the biggest companies in the world beginning to implement sustainability. In March, I will go to Afghanistan, one of the poorest countries on the planet, and work there with the Kabul Polytechnic University on teaching their teachers how to help their students rebuild Afghanistan using world best practice in sustainable ways to provide energy, water, housing, transportation, sanitation, the things that people have to have. The Afghans can do this themselves and leapfrog over the mistakes that we've made by using the best technologies. The rest of the time I travel, I consult for companies big and small, I help little communities and some of the world's largest communities implement these technologies Again, because they cost less, they work better, and they give a higher quality of life. We're at very serious risk of massive migrations of people as where they live is no longer tenable to live. We're seeing the spread northward of diseases. There was recently a variant of dengue fever in the north of Italy, and people blamed the immigrants. Yes, it was immigrants. It was a mosquito that previously could never live in Italy and now can because the climate has changed. When I work with a company, I present to them the principles of what we call natural capitalism. This is how we can move from where we are today, which is wholly unsustainable. If we continue the way we are, something like 60 to 90% of species on Earth will be gone within 100 years, say the scientists, because of things like climate change because of the toxins that we're pouring into the air and into the water and into our bodies. But we can conduct business in a much better way, a much more profitable way, using these three principles of natural capitalism. The first is to use all resources dramatically more productively. Using principles called biomimicry. This is how nature does business. Nature runs on sunlight, not on fossil fuel. Nature makes everything near to something that's alive, not the way we do industry. Nature has no waste. The output of any process in nature is food for some other. Nature shops locally, and nature is beautiful. Then the third principle is to manage all of our institutions so that they restore human and natural capital. These are the two forms of capital that are now in short supply in our world. The approach that we're talking about is simply a better way to do business. For example, if you use resources more productively, you don't have to spend as much to get them. If you are not endangering the climate, you don't have that risk. So companies like Walmart, the biggest company on the planet, has recently started going to its suppliers and saying, what's your carbon footprint? The banks are getting involved. The insurance company, Swiss Re, the big European reinsurance agent, recently said to its customers, if you as a company don't take your carbon footprint seriously, maybe we as a company don't want to insure you or your officers and directors. So a company that is proactively protecting the climate is a better insurance risk. People want to work with companies that are more responsible, so companies like British Petroleum that rebranded itself as Beyond Petroleum and now has saved 
over a billion dollars by reducing its carbon emissions, about a billion and a half to be precise, said even if it cost us money, it would be a good thing to do. It makes us the kind of company the best talent wants to come and work at. No, most people's footprint is actually two, five, ten hectares of ground that is what's required to dig up, to grow, to produce everything that I use. So for example, the metal in my watch, the fabric in my clothing, the felt in my hat, everything that I use came from somewhere. The more stuff I use, the more land is required to produce all that stuff and the bigger my footprint. If I fly a lot, which I do, the bigger my footprint. If instead I live simply, which I try to, this hat has been with me now for 30 years. I buy my clothing at a second-hand store. It is reused clothing. The clothes that I wear are pretty much what I wear wherever I go. Wash them and wear them again. The less stuff I use, the smaller my footprint. Now, Michael Braungart would say we shouldn't be trying to constrain our footprint. Nature doesn't constrain her footprint. Nature is expansive. And so if we switch from using plastics, uh, toxins, emitting CO2 and other greenhouse gases, and living the way that nature does, biomimicry, then we can actually, as humans, have more of what we truly want. Fun, culture, art, design, learning, good food, time with our families. We can have lots of that. It's the throughput of stuff that's killing the planet. And we can fix it. We have every technology that we need to solve all the problems facing us. It's a question of heart. Do we, living today, have love for those who will come after us? The folk singer Kate Wolf said, find what you care about and live a life that shows it. We have the chance now to create a vision that all living things can share. When we do, as humans, we will find our place, our home on this planet. We are a bit like an invasive species that comes into an area and, it, and colonizes it and takes over. We need to learn to become native, to have a home, and to become adapted in that home the way all the species around us do. And then to work together, to design together, to learn together, to create a high quality of life that is a vision all living things can share.